This LOS is distinguished between dilutive and anti-dilutive securities and describe the implications of each for the earnings per share calculation. Earnings per share, diluted EPS. So we're carrying on now with diluted earnings per share when a company has stock options, warrants, or their equivalents outstanding. So the diluted EPS is the net income minus the preferred dividends in the numerator, but in the denominator, it's the weighted average number of shares outstanding plus new shares that would have been issued at option exercise, but this is very important, I put it in bold and in red, minus shares that could have been purchased with cash received upon exercise. So the company uh, issues some options, they get exercised, the company receives some cash, and they use that cash to buy back their own shares, times the proportion of the year during which the financial instruments were outstanding. So it's a new calculation. It's one that takes a little bit of practice to get on top of. Earnings per share, diluted earnings per share. So again, we're looking now at diluted earnings per share when a company has stock options, warrants, or their equivalents outstanding. So we're going to look at a, an example here. High Tech Company reported net income of $2.3 million for the year ended 30th of June 2009. So they've got a, uh, a fiscal year, not a calendar year. And had a weighted average of 800,000 common shares outstanding. At the beginning of the fiscal year, the company has outstanding 30,000 options with an exercise price of $35. No other potentially dilutive financial instruments are outstanding. Over the fiscal year, the company's market price averaged $55 per share. Calculate the company's basic and diluted earnings per share. Using the treasury stock method, we first calculate that the company would have received $1,050,000, $35 per share for each of the 30,000 options exercised, if all of the options had been exercised. These options would no longer be outstanding. Instead, 30,000 common shares of uh, common stock would be outstanding. Under the treasury stock method though, we assume that shares would be repurchased with the cash received upon exercise of the options. At an average market price of $55, the $1,050,000 proceeds from option exercise, the company could have repurchased 19,091 shares. Therefore, the incremental number of shares issued is 10,909, calculated as the 30,000 minus 19,091. For the diluted earnings per share calculation, no change is made to the numerator. So before, the basic is the numerator's 2.3 million on the net income divided by the 800,000 shares of common shares outstanding. That was given to us in the first paragraph. That was easy to calculate, 288. After the options were exercised, the numerator is the same, 2.3 million, but the denominator now is 810,091, so our diluted earnings per share is $2.81. So indeed, these stock options were dilutive. So let's do a practice question to consolidate our understanding. Assume US GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles, applies unless otherwise noted. An analyst gathers the following information about a company. The average market price per share of common stock during the year is $40. The exercise price per share for options on 50,000 common shares is $50. The exercise price per share for warrants on 20,000 common shares is $30. Using the treasury stock method, the number of incremental shares used to compute diluted earnings per share is closest to A, 5,000, B, 15,000, or C, 20,000. Okay, this is a nice little question because it forces you to slow down and think a little bit. Uh, the correct answer is A, the 5,000 is the incremental number of shares used to compute the diluted, the diluted earnings per share. So let's look why. Diluted earnings per share is calculated using the treasury stock method that considers what would be the effect if the options or warrants had been exercised. Only options or warrants that are in the money are included as out of the money options would not be exercised. So we can see the exercise price for the options on 50,000 shares is $50, but the average market price was $40. An option gives you the right, but not the obligation to buy. 
So why would you buy the stock at $50 if the average market price was 40? So the 50,000, the options on the 50,000 common shares at $50 are not going to be exercised. On the other hand, if we look at the warrants, they give you the right to buy at $30 and the average price was 40. So buy low, sell high, you would exercise those warrants. So uh, therefore, only the warrants are dilutive. Their exercise price is below the average market price of the stock. So now using the treasury stock method, the number of new shares issued or exercised is reduced by the number of shares that can be purchased with the cash received upon exercise of the warrants. So we do the 20,000 times the $30, that equals 600,000 in proceeds, and 600,000 divided by the $40 average market price equals 15,000. So 20,000 minus 15,000 equals 5,000. The correct answer is A. Not too bad when you've practiced this type of question once or twice. Earnings per share. Other issues with diluted earnings per share. It is possible that some potentially convertible securities could be anti-dilutive, i.e. their inclusion in the computation would result in an earnings per share higher than the company's basic earnings per share. Under IFRS and US GAAP, anti-dilutive securities are not included in the calculation of diluted earnings per share. Diluted earnings per share should reflect the maximum potential dilution from conversion or exercise of potentially dilutive financial instruments. Diluted earnings per share will always be less than or equal to the basic earnings per share. So let's just go through an example here of other issues with diluted earnings per share. For the year ended 31st December 2009, Dim Cool Utility Company had a net income of 1,750,000. The company had an average of 500,000 shares of common stock outstanding, 20,000 shares of convertible preferred, uh, and no other potentially dilutive security. Each share of the preferred pays a dividend of $10 per share, and each is convertible into three shares of the company's common stock. What was the company's basic and diluted earnings per share? By this point, calculating the basic earnings per share should be pretty easy. The calculation is net income minus the preferred dividend in the numerator divided by the weighted average number of shares outstanding in the denominator. So for the numerator, we know the net income is given to us 1,750,000 minus the preferred dividend of 200,000, which is the 20,000 shares times the $10 preferred dividend uh, per share. So 1,750,000 minus 200,000, we have 1,550,000 in the numerator divided by 500,000 shares of common stock, which was given to us. So we have a basic earnings per share of $3.10. Now, if those convertible shares are converted, uh, the preferred shares, then we're not going to have the preferred dividend anymore. So our numerator becomes the net income, the 1,750,000. But we have to add the uh, uh, new shares if they are converted. So we have to look, that's 20,000 shares, and they're convertible into three shares of the company's common stock. So we're going to have to add 60,000 shares to the denominator. So 500,000 plus 60,000, 560,000. So 1,750,000 divided by 560,000, we can see that we get a diluted earnings per share of $3.13, which is larger than our basic earnings per share. So it exceeds the basic earnings per share. The security is anti-dilutive and therefore it's not included. We're gonna report the diluted earnings per share to be the $3.10. We're going to finish this LOS with a practice question, as we often do. Assume U.S. GAAP applies unless otherwise noted. An analyst gathers the following information about a company. The shares of common stock outstanding is a million. Net income for the year, 1.5 million. Par value of convertible bonds with a 4% coupon rate, 10 million. Par value of cum cumulative preferred stock with a 7% dividend rate, 2 million. The tax rate is 30%. The bonds were issued at par and can be converted into 300,000 common shares. All securities were outstanding for the entire year. Diluted earnings per share is closest to A, $1.05, B, $1.26, or C, $1.36. Okay, this is a nice question because we have to go through a couple of calculations fairly quickly. So first of all, we need to calculate the dividends. We have a, a 2 million of 
cumulative preferred stock. It's not convertible, it's just cumulative, a 7% dividend rate. So 7% times 2 million is 140,000 because we know it's net income minus preferred dividends divided by the weighted average number of common shares outstanding for our basic EPS, okay? Uh, so we needed to calculate that preferred dividend very quickly. So now we know that uh, they've given us the net income for the year, 1.5 million. So the amount available to the common shareholders is 1,360,000, which is our 1.5 million minus the 140,000. So we have our numerator, 1,360,000, great. Now we have to move to the denominator. So the basic earnings per share is easy. We don't do any adjustments to the denominator. It's the million shares which are outstanding. So 1,360,000 divided by a million gives us $1.36. We need that because we need to compare the diluted or anti-dilutive uh, earnings per share versus the basic. Now the diluted earnings per share would consider the convertible bonds if they were dilutive. Interest on the bonds is 400,000. We can see that's 10 million times a 4% coupon rate, so it's 400,000. And again, we have to do that an uh, after-tax amount is added back to the net income, so it's 400,000 times one minus the tax rate equals 280,000. So we know now for the numerator, we need to add back that 280,000. And then to the denominator, we're gonna add the, the 300,000 common shares, which could be added to the common stock outstanding. So it becomes a fairly easy calculation, not too bad. So the uh, numerator is gonna be 1,360,000 plus the 280,000 divided by 1 million plus the 300,000. So we get 1.64 million divided by 1.3 million, we get a dollar 26 per share, and a dollar 26 is less than the dollar 36, so we do not include it. The, it's anti-dilutive, so our correct answer is therefore C, which is a dollar 36, which is our basics earnings per share. Because as we uh, said earlier, the diluted earnings per share is going to be less than or equal to the basic earnings per share. And that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.